So we hear the ID TechX and the hi, so who are you? I'm uh, Daniel Job from uh, Resident Europe. So right here, um, Resident Europe, uh, acoustic mixers and hi, so who are you? So I'm Andrew DePady. And so what are you going to do right here? So we're going to show a small little demo where we have uh, some graphene and uh, it's agglomerated. So here from the first graphene? From here. So it's a, it should be a nano powder, uh, but it's actually agglomerated, so it's a large powder at the moment. We're going to put it into a tube full of polystyrene beads, and that will have a milling effect, and it will reduce the agglomerated powder to uh, a nano powder where it should be, and then that nano powder will coat the beads. So uh, this is your machine. This what is, is this? This is the Labram. It's a resonant acoustic mixer. It's a new mixing technology. Essentially, we have a non-contact mixer. Yeah. Its uh, platform goes up and down about 60 times a second, but it automatically finds the resonant frequency of the platform and whatever's on it, holds it at resonance at accelerations up to 100G, and it will literally mix any combination of uh, materials, liquids and liquids, liquids and gases, liquids and solids, or solids and solids. So it recognizes what's on it? It recognizes the, uh, the weight of the payload that's on it and finds its resonant frequency. So every weight has a resonant frequency? Every system has a resonant frequency. A system? Yes. And you have they, to type in what material is there? No, it, uh, it works it all out for itself. It's, uh, the, it's the system, the platform, and the payload. And the technology can be used to mix virtually any combination of materials. It mixes incredibly quickly, sometimes 10 times faster than conventional mixing. It mixes more uniformly and more repeatably. It's able to cope with nano materials. It works great with graphene. Uh, it's much safer with hazardous materials. And it's having a real impact in the battery industry. Nice. So uh, you can show? Sure. So we'll put some uh, a graphene. How much you put? Uh, less than a gram. Graphene is a very light material or? Yeah, it's very light. Very small particles. And you close it tight? We'll close it onto the unit. We clamp it down. How long is it going to take? Two, two seconds. Two seconds. So you should see a color change very quickly. Oh, one, so, one second, one second, yeah. Okay. Whoa. And they all coated completely? Very uniformly. So uh, what's the main use case for this? So the technology is in use over 30 industries. It's rapidly becoming the uh, mixing technology of choice with energetic materials and now also with batteries and also in the pharmaceutical industry. So it's not really specific to one industry. It's a very broad technology platform. And the machine can do mixing, it can do milling, and it can do coating. So let's go over here. Um, you talk about uh, this relevant for all these things here, batteries, indeed, large-scale batteries. The, yeah, the, the other nice thing about the RAM technology is that we go from the laboratory scale, so you can work out your settings on the lab mixer and take that all the way through uh, our f new 5 kilo Omni RAM platform to the 36 kilo capacity RAM 5 and even the 420 kilo capacity RAM 55. It scales very well. There's virtually no difference between the laboratory scale and the production scale settings. Um, so what are we looking at here? Which one is this? So that is the original Labram. Uh, that's now been replaced. Uh, we mainly have the, the Labram 2, but we're just bringing out a new Labram 1 for the half kilo capacity. This is a one kilo capacity system. And the real advantage to the user is the uh, payback times you can achieve with this machine. So uh, we have lots of examples from the different industries that we use. Um, mixes that were 24 hours in conventional technology and now down to just a few minutes using the RAM. So the machine uh, pays for itself very quickly and the improvements that you can get, you can do one of two things. You can either make what you previously made better uh, with less waste um, or you can actually make new materials. RAM will process things uh, with viscosities much higher than conventional mixers can handle. Um, so this is the 
bigger, slightly bigger one? So uh, this is the 2H model. This is for hazardous materials specifically. So anything uh, where there's a hazardous environment or working with explosives, this is a sealed unit, liquid cooled uh, and compressed air purged. So that's specifically what do they do for here? hazardous environments. Like lithium is hazardous? Uh, uh, that's for explosives, uh, for hazardous powders, yes, for, uh, for flammable, uh, flammable materials. And then the Omniram is our five kilo capacity, also available in a hazardous rated uh, version. So you sell the machines? We, uh, Resident is the manufacturer of the machines, the only manufacturer uh, to make a resonant acoustic mixer in the world. The only? Yes. Uh, but you said Europe. So uh, Resident Europe specifically looks after uh, Europe and the European market. Uh, we don't work through uh, distributors, we want to look after customers directly. And you said this is a big deal? I mean, a lot of people need this? Yes, so uh, with For all these uh, uh, things. As, as we move into the uh, new developments in the battery industry uh, and uh, 3D printing, additive manufacture, the, uh, the quality and the distribution of your ingredients, the ability to process nano powders becomes more and more important. So conventional mixers are just unable to, to deal with these materials, and that's where the RAM's really finding some benefit. But this demo here had the beads, right? So yes. Small beads. So this was what a, is that for? It's this just a, a demo. This is a coating demonstration, because the RAM is a very People don't use beads. It's a very versatile platform. So in addition to doing mixing, you can do coating. Those beads are very much the same as the ones you'd use for a, um, injection molding system. So if you wanted to take a plastic, a standard plastic, modify it, coat it with graphene, so it, went, it flowed better into your injection mold, or it had better uh, mechanical properties, you could use the RAM to coat those materials before they went into that uh, into that system. So my camera is 60 frames per second. Yes. Uh, how much was it shaking per second here? So if we have a quick look at the uh, frequency that the mix ended on, it was uh, 61.82 hertz. So it's nearly... It's nearly the same as my camera frame rate? Essentially, you should almost uh, be able to freeze some of that motion out. So that means I could have, it means every shake 60 times per second, yes. up and down, or up. Yeah. Up and down. Um, and uh, it's an exact frame uh, rate that's perfect for the amount of beads that was there and so, everything? So it automatically found the uh, resonant frequency, 61.82 hertz, for the platform and what was placed on it, and kept the material at that. If it was an evolving mix uh, that went from dry powders and a liquid to a, a paste, as the mix changed, the machine would automatically <laughs> adjust its resonant frequency. And that's the clever bit about the technology. How do you know how long it needs to shake? So when is it mixed is an excellent question. One of the things that we're starting to find out is that we don't really understand lots of the materials that uh, that we actually mix. So uh, the RAM is showing that you can actually achieve better distribution of those materials. So you need other techniques, be it uh, near-infrared uh, or ultrasonic or X-ray tomography, to look at those materials and really see when we're getting the best answer. But in terms of it, uh, it, it outstrips the conventional techniques very, very quickly. So people already know, sometimes within seconds, that you've got a much better mixed product than you can achieve conventionally. So what if you mix too long? Is it fine so, or is it not a good idea? Uh, you can uh, you can overmix some materials. So for instance, if you have something that you want to preserve a particular particle size or particle morphology, the longer you mix it, you might start to mill that material down. And that's what, again, one of the advantages to the speed with which RAM can mix. You can get that mixed result very quickly before you've um, changed the particle, morpho uh, particle morphology. And um, uh, if you look over here, um, what else can you say about the applications? Uh, what do you do with this field of the so, uh, flexible for, electronic stuff? For things like printed circuit boards, the uh, the printing inks that are going into those are becoming more uh, sophisticated. Uh, we're dealing with uh, with new markets which require flexibility uh, or, or thinner materials, so you need to get smaller particle fills into your printing inks. RAM is excellent for mixing those in. And with the batteries, again, everybody's trying to squeeze that little bit extra performance out of the batteries, work with new materials, finer materials, and RAM is one of the only technologies that's able to process those materials. Does it mean everybody in this industry is already a customer of yours or not yet? We've got a lot of customers in the industry, but uh, the number of people that are using RAM is growing rapidly. Uh, so we're finding that uh, customers previously had the laboratory scale machines. They've had those a little while, and now we're starting to move into the larger scale machines. Because this is large scale we're talking about. Uh, it goes, uh, yeah, say all the way up to our biggest mix of 420 kilos, and we're even looking at techniques to make the process continuous so that you can actually continuously feed the materials in and take finished product off the machine. So that means you could have uh, mixed stuff for potentially 
billions of things out there. Yes, there's, uh, there, there really isn't any limit to the, uh, the industries and the, the products that RAM can be uh, and, used for. And the, the part you were talking about, about uh, when it's mixed, when it's finished, are you doing stuff in that that direction, or there's other tools for measuring that kind of stuff? We're doing our own research, but our customers uh, are our main source of information. So, as a, the customer understands their product better than anyone, and they can uh, they have the analytical techniques to support uh, deciding when that product's mixed or how uh, how they should change the settings. You don't input. Uh, I put two grams of. Uh of uh, graphene and I have these many beads, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. All you need to decide is what acceleration that you're going to mix at. There are other options, so your container size is an option, you could decide to use vacuum or temperature control, but the main input into that machine is the acceleration setting, anything from 1 to 100 G, and uh, finding that right one takes a little bit of experimentation, but once you've found it, it mixes incredibly quickly.